Welcome once again to the newly named Josh Potter Show. And if you'd missed last week's episode, yes, we have a new name. Turns out our previous name was shared by a a pest control company's apparatus to apprehend roaches. And uh, turns out they didn't like us associating our name with theirs. So we have decided this would be the best course of action. And I thank you for uh, flowing with us and being with us, despite the name. I'm still the cockroach. You're still my little roaches above 18. And uh, I love all of you. And we have a new email. It is Josh Potter Show at YMHstudios.com. And that is where uh, Griff sent in this uh, instrumental, Beans. Let's give it a listen. Thank you, Griff. As far as dates go... I don't have any. But I do want to thank everybody that came out to Phoenix, who came out to Nashville. Nashville sold out uh, right away, like before I even got there. So, I mean, thank you for Nashville. Huntsville, thank you uh, for coming to that as well. All the shows, I appreciate everybody who came, and hopefully I can get some more dates and get back on the road ASAP once COVID chills the hell up. It's really been annoying. Also, I want to let you know, uh, I'm on Twitch when I'm not here. If you need more of me, and I can't imagine why you would, but if you do, uh, please go to my twitch.tv slash josh underscore potter. That's where you could go there. And also, we're going to be getting merch soon, and uh, all the merch can be found at a brand new store, which is at store.ymhstudios.com. So you can go check out the brand new store, and eventually there will be Josh Potter Show merch up there. Of course, we had a little hiccup, what with the name change and all. So I appreciate you uh, being patient with us on all fronts as we get this little show off of the ground. Any is here once again uh, with Nadav and Zolo in the back. Say what's up to Any. Yo, what's up? Yo, what are you guys Yo. laughing about? Because I had something funny. Uh, no, I think it was just how fast you you changed over. <laughs> how quickly I got rid of the instrumental. I'm like, all right, we're on. We're moving on from that. Yes, no, we have to get into the nice boy segment of the show. It's the nice boy clock is running. So we only have a certain amount of time for nice boy, Josh. And I want to get all the things in there. You know what I was thinking about? And uh, I feel bad I didn't mention this in the talking points prior to the show. Uh, but a couple of weeks ago, obviously, I was on both your mom's house and Dr. Drew After Dark, where we watched a video of a man playing Sweet Caroline and then another man uh, dragging him off of the stage. If you missed it, you can go back and watch my episodes of Dr. Drew After Dark and of your mom's house. We don't have the video here, and that's okay. We don't need to watch it again. But it got me to thinking all of a sudden I, I was away from it for a time and it got me wondering why tom played that for me and it made me remember an incident where um we were in a car together we were going to a show we were getting picked up from a hotel and we were going to the show so not a very long time spent in the car nevertheless we get in and and our guy who's picking us up this isn't an uber or something this is like the person from the club or the theater i don't remember what we were performing in at the time but they were coming to get us and so this guy's car had all a bunch of trash in it and shit like that. That's, you know, whatever here, neither here nor there, but he was playing the most obnoxious jazz music, like the kind of jazz where it's like, beep, 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 beep. like, it doesn't make any sense. It's just like all over the place. Do you know what I'm saying? Have you ever heard this music any? Yeah. Yeah. I used to take my girl to the jazz clubs all the time. So, but there's like a cool jazz and then there's like jazz where you're just like, make it fucking stop. Right? Do you know what I'm saying? The difference? <laughs> yeah. Is there, like, is there a style? Do, am I missing a name? Is it like... No, that's definitely the type of jazz where, you know, they, they have to explain it to you. <laughs> They'll tell you what's behind the meaning of everything. It's like, no, this is just garbage. It's just like... And you're like, it's just over a bunch of other noise. And you're like, what? They're not even really doing anything. Like, I remember I was in a jazz band in high school, but we played like classical gas. I mean, it was like there was jazz. You know what I'm saying? And then you'd have solos. But it wasn't this cacophony of noise. And that's the kind of jazz that this this particular person who picked us up decided to have playing in the car on the way over to the the show. And the second I got in the car, my blood started boiling. And I could feel the hair on my arms standing up. And I was like, this, this is what the guy's listening to. We're just driving, listening to this right now. And I texted Tom 
I was like, I just, you know, I'm sitting in the back seat. He's sitting in the front seat. And I texted Tom. I said, I need to get out of this car immediately or else I'm going to uh, uh, murder. this guy because of this fucking thing. I wasn't loud enough, was it? But uh, nevertheless, you got the drift. I was ready. I was ready to just like end all of our lives basically by driving the car off of a cliff because of this music. And it got me to thinking like, maybe that's why Tom played that thing for me. Uh, Cause certain music does trigger me like that, where it just all of a sudden my blood pressure rises and I'll just start to have my blood boil and it makes me insane. Do you have anything like that? Any that you have uh, noticed in your life? Country, man. Country, I I all forms. I cannot do it. It's so, it feels racist just hearing it. <laughs> do you have any particular songs that stand out? They all sound the same, bro. I feel like it's it's how racist white people think about rap music. It's literally, I'm talking That's... about girls, talking about trucks, fucking NASCAR and craft beer. Come on, man. Now, let's not sully the great name of NASCAR. <laughs> Congratulations to Chase Elliott, 2020 NASCAR champion, by the way. Uh... Anywho, yeah, no, I mean, I get, that's actually very funny that you say it's very much like racist white people hear rap music and stuff like that. Now, am I racist? Because I remember I had a landlord who, um, you know, he used to bug me. I'd be outside and he'd stop me to talk and he'd say, uh, you know, just tell me about his day. He'd be like, isn't Trump great? And I'd be like, oh my God, I want to die. And uh, he, I remember him discussing rap music with me and he's like, I hate it. It's just noise. And instead of me debating him on the on the merits of rap music i just nodded my head and was like yep i know right is that bad did i do a bad thing you're asking me if if that's racist (laughs) yeah like am i just a bad like do did i enable his racism because i just wanted to move along with my day as opposed to get into a debate with this man who i definitely wouldn't convince I mean, I would have done the exact same thing. It's just like, all right, man, <laughs> sure, yeah. So if he came up to you and he's like, I think all your people are fucking thieves and <laughs> are, are, I mean, gee, damn it, beep that, please. <laughs> God, the nice boy hour has been ruined. We have ruined the nice boy clock. You had three minutes, bro. <laughs> I screwed, I didn't even think, it just came out of my mouth, man. The nice boy hour has been sullied and I apologize <laughs> to all out there. I have to make an apology. I have to apologize. I've sullied the nice boy hour by saying the R word. No, not the one we're used to. Different R word this time. There's Vado coming to the plate. Yeah, I used the one that YouTube particularly doesn't enjoy. I don't think they enjoy either of them. Well, this one, definitely egregious. And I've made an error. And there's Votto. The swing, that's a liner. Left center. Easily handled there. That's one out. Moustakis approaching. But yes, I'll uh, try to get through the rest of the nice boy hour without using that particular R word. Or that other one that you might be confusing with the one that I'm talking about. Anyhow. Sorry, folks. Yes, the nice boy clock. Maybe we can put a red... We can put red on it now. It's like fucking over because I blew it. But I wanted to talk about this other little sweet thing that'll get us definitely through. And that's because every Sunday night football, I'll be sitting there and I'll be watching and I'll be watching my football. And uh, all of a sudden, this Mercedes commercial plays. And it is so sad. Has anything on television made you cry? Any like where you're just watching and you're like, why am I crying? I'm an adult. Uh, no, not, not even can... like an Allegra commercial on accident. You know what I'm saying? Like, have you ever been caught in a moment where you're just like, I'm too emotional? No, the, no, no, nothing like that. I mean, I cried, uh, at the, at the show, the two, two bears, one bull. I cried for that. Two, but... the two bears, one bull. Yeah. But that wasn't like on TV, you know, like anything you that's cried on TV, at two bears, one bull. Yeah. I cried cause he talked about, um, uh, putting his dog down. Now and... what that is, by the way, for folks at home. Tom and Bert, the two from Two Bears One Cave, right here on your mom's house studios, uh, they performed at the Rose Bowl live on stage. So, and he was there, and he cried when Bert was on. He cried when Bert Kreischer was doing stand-up comedy. Go ahead, continue. 
I mean, that's just it. It was just a it was a trigger. I didn't even know he was, triggered you with his dog story. I didn't even know. It Does existed. Bert know that that happened to you? No, I would never tell him that. Really? Yeah, Why I would, not? I would never want him to know because I feel like he would take it personally. It's obviously nothing personal, you know. You think he would be upset about that? I, don't I think know, he yeah. would be like, "Oh my god, I'm a god." <laughs> Maybe you would. I he don't moved know, you yeah. to tears. That's like a lovely thing. I think. I don't know. I would be very proud if my story did that. Um, yeah. You should. Maybe, maybe now he knows. We'll find out. But anyhow, uh, yeah. So this commercial makes me like a fucking baby, and uh, we can't watch it, but I can give you the gist. Here's the first frame of it. This little stuffed animal. I don't even know what it is. It's like a little rag thing. It's chained to the grill of a semi, and the semi just pulls up. Now, what kind of heartless? Can we see the nice boy clock for a moment? Where we're at? Just just to see where I'm at? Okay, we're past it. Okay, so we're out of the nice boy hour. Yeah, so this fucking piece of shit truck driver, some heartless, probably just loves going to glory holes and getting his dick sucked by other dudes. This closeted fucking, probably like on a fucking breaker, breaker one nine. It's candy cane. How are you, candy cane? You know what I'm saying? One of these fucking, a real chomo. Let's just put it that way. He's got this thing strapped to his grill like a piece of shit. And it pulls up to a rest stop. And you see this little sad guy. Just It's cold. It's snowing. And all of a sudden, this guy wakes up. He's, he's, he's moving around, by the way. He wakes up, he goes, hmm? And he looks up and he sees this car with a little girl pull up to the rest stop and they get out to go inside and purchase some things. And he goes, oh my God, this is my chance. So he leaps down off of the truck and he starts crawling across the snow through the wind and the rain and the sleet and the slush. And he's just making his way. He has to, he, he encounters a river of slush there. And he jumps into it and he comes out even more cold and wet and just wind. I mean, he could get left for dead out there, this little thing. And he crawls out of the river. There he is emerging from the river, trying to make it to the little girl's car. And thank goodness the little girl arrives out of the store and sees him in the street, goes, look, mom, look what I found. And she picks him up and brushes him off. And now he's in her arms and they hug and they ride off in their new Mercedes. And, you know, when the Mercedes thing comes on, by the time they show the logo, I'm like, oh, my God. I'm just like, I hope Aaron Rodgers throws a touchdown for my fantasy team. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get, I'm watching football, and I'm like, okay. And, I mean, this is like multiple times in a game that they play this fucking thing. And, um, yeah, so you immediately, like, get just, I don't know. I, I It fucks me up, and I don't like it. I'm really upset that Mercedes has it. And I, I'm getting like sad thinking about it. And I can't believe that. I mean, if anyone, I dare you, if you watch that commercial and you do not cry, you are a heartless piece of shit, just like that truck driver. And I'd imagine that you're on the other side of that glory hole sucking his dick. That's what you are. You're a fucking loser. Okay. What? I don't know. No, but I, who couldn't cry at that? Are you, are you, did you guys, when I was describing that story, I could sense people welling up in the back. Is that true? I could feel it. Uh, Come on, you heartless sons of bitches. Sure. Sure. And yeah. No. Says yes. You guys don't have souls. No. Yeah. The little, the, the, have you seen it the live? Little, the commercial? Uh, no, I don't have live television. So, I mean, I wish I didn't after this you know this is like a real trigger moment i mean they should give you a warning when that shit's going to come on the television set but uh yeah i thought i could put that into the nice boy hour but we had to fill it with an apology because i used the r word so we're all out of sorts so i apologize again profusely uh but let's continue with the sports world we've had a lot go on um I'm very excited for one person who I'd like to maybe get as a, a guest of the show at some point down the road, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Beep, 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 be
I want to play this thing. Speaking of the Cincinnati Reds, uh, of course, our debut episode, we focused quite a bit on Tom Brenneman and his apology. I mean, hell, it spawned my way out of making some mistakes, as you just saw. And, um, well, somebody took the president of the United States making a, a speech about how he will not concede, and uh, somehow they've managed to manipulate it so that it turned into the Brenneman apology. Let's give it a listen. Myself, and think of myself as a man of the people, as there's a drive into deep left field by Castellanos, and that'll be a home run, and so they'll make it a 4-0 ball game. I don't know if I'll ever step foot in the Oval Office again, whether that be for the United States of America or my Trump hotel line. There you go. Very funny. Thank you to all the people, by the way. So many people sent that in to uh, Josh Potter's show at ymhstudios.com. But Trevor Bauer, pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds, uh, who may not be a pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds much longer, uh, as he is most likely going to be moving on, which saddens me a little bit. He tweeted back in 2015, and I think we have the tweet. He said that um, he'd buy a McLaren if he ever won the Cy Young Award. And here's the tweet right here. Uh, Well, guess what, Trevor Bauer? I hope you got some money for a McLaren because the guy got the Cy Young Award. And uh, now it's like, do you hold yourself to that standard? Award season for the baseball also means digging up old tweets. And uh, with this one, it may work out for National League Cy Young Award winner Trevor Bauer. Bauer tweeted out a pic of a decent-looking McLaren MP4 back in 2015, just a guy being a guy and admiring the nice piece of machinery. And a Twitter user chimed in and asked if he... Uh, could see Bauer coming into progressive field with that car. He played for the Indians at the time. He explained that uh, he would indeed buy the car for himself if he ever wins a Cy Young Award. Fast forward here five years later, boom. 2020 National League Cy Young Award winner. I mean, uh, I don't know, man. I'm not a lawyer, but I, I would hold, I'd be like, you have to buy it now. Like, what, what if that was like in the, they were like, here's the award, but now you got to buy a McLaren. They're about $230,000, uh, a McLaren. So that's pocket change for Bauer because he's going to get a nice sized contract in the off season from a team looking to add an ace to their rotation. Um, many people speculating the re- the Mets. I think if Trevor Bauer's smart, he goes to the Angels. The Angels would be my ideal team. I'm talking lifestyle wise because you live in fucking LA where there's a shit ton of celebrities and you can just exist. You can make a bazillion dollars and just live amongst celebrities. No one cares about Trevor Bauer at Starbucks. Do you know what I'm saying? When they're in LA, if you're in fucking Milwaukee or someplace, yeah, they're going to be like, holy shit, Trevor Bauer is at Starbucks and they're going to tweet it out and shit. In LA, they're not even going to notice who, they don't even know who Trevor Bauer is. They're like TikTok kids looking at their phone and shit and they won't even care. So it's like, he should go play for the fucking angels, but he'll go to the Mets or something. I don't know. I'm sad he won't be on the Reds anymore. It makes me bummed out, but I hope he does by himself. Uh, a new McLaren. Um, I thought this was very fun. It was on a, a podcast interviews, podcast interviews with these sports stars. And I'd like to get Trevor Bauer. I know he does a podcast. It would be fun if he does play for the angels, maybe to get him a guest here on the newly named Josh Potter show. Um, so we're looking forward to that. This I thought was interesting though. Um, Isaiah Thomas uh, was on a, a podcast with what's his name? Um, Sterling Sharp, I believe. doesn't. They don't even give credit to the podcast in this. I think that's funny. Uh, but I want to give credit for it. Yeah, Sterling Sharp's podcast. Um, but Isaiah Thomas, of course, arch rival of Michael Jordan, former player for the Detroit Pistons, the bad boys of Detroit. You know what I'm saying? Like Michael Jordan ended up usurping them once he became prominent in the 90s. But there was a little bit there where Isaiah and the Pistons had a leg up on Michael. And Isaiah has said in interviews that he was never chasing Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was chasing him, meaning like he came first. He was chasing um, Magic. He was chasing uh, Larry Bird. He wasn't chasing Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was chasing him. And Michael Jordan said in The Last Dance, the documentary that came out, he was like, I'll forever hate Isaiah Thomas, which I think is so fun. Like at the time, you're like, that's great. I love that. But Isaiah Thomas spun it in a way where it makes Michael Jordan look like such a bitch. Oh my God, it's so fucking funny. Like he said in this interview, until I watched The Last Dance, I didn't realize he felt that way about me. Like he just kind of dismissed him. And then like at another point in the interview, they were like, name your five most like worthy opponents that you faced, like that you thought were like difficult. And he named like, he named four players and he goes, I guess Michael Jordan. He like threw that in at the end. 
And uh, I just think it's funny. Like, and, and then you hear Michael Jordan, like in the, in the documentary, he says things like, uh, you can show me anything you want. There's no way you can convince me he wasn't a jerk. That sounds like little baby shit now, doesn't it? When you hear about it, it's like makes Jordan's just sound like a bitch. Um, Jordan said in the other, uh, also said, whatever he says now, you know, it wasn't his true actions. Then he has time left to think about it. Uh, or the reaction from the public has changed his perspective. And again, I, Isaiah's like, I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't even think about you, you little bitch. You weren't even like, I was I was trying to chase down Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. He, and he does it all with a smile. I think it's hilarious. So Isaiah Thomas, I think, is going to forever be my goat. You know, because he's just the best at talking shit. And that's the kind of the way he played too, obviously, if you're not familiar. Isaiah Thomas didn't wasn't like the best shooter, the best rebound guy i mean he was like a fucking great at all those things but he really where he excelled was that he was talking trash to a level and playing aggressively to a level in which was astonishing and elite as a matter of fact so um that's it for sports i believe for uh the show for now uh, i didn't have anything else you're welcome those of you who hate it uh let's move on to the news ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum. That's right, folks. Hard hitting headlines. This one reading Egyptian man recovering after doctors remove live goldfish from his throat. You don't hear that one on fucking NBC nightly, do you? No. Have you ever eaten a goldfish, Annie? A goldfish? Yeah. This, have you ever seen anybody do it at a party or anything like that? You mean like a live one? Yeah. This Not is like a, a big, this is a big frat boy move. Mm mm. I didn't go to college. Uh uh-uh. No, never went to a frat party either? No. Nah. I mean, I barely went to college, and I still pretended and went to the parties at least. But yeah, no, it is. And I remember uh, one time when I was a child, I had a goldfish. I was about, uh, how old was I? About seven or eight years old. And on Christmas, my uncle came over, and he goes, watch this. And he drank the goldfish. He just swallowed it. And I go, cool, bring it back. And he's like, you don't. And then he like laughed and I was like, what, but where's my goldfish? And he's like, it's in my stomach dying. Like he didn't say that, but that's where it was. But that's a thing that people do. I mean, I've seen it at frat parties. It's like a parlor trick. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, have you ever heard of, has any of you ever heard of this before? Am I the only one? Is this like a nineties thing? I feel like people stop probably doing it, you know, with PETA coming around and shit. No, there was a, I mean, that's how Steve-O got big. He swallowed, he did the goldfish trick. Oh, that's right. He did the trick though, where he brought it back to life. Uh, right. He, d- he did, he did what you thought your uncle was going to do. Yeah. And my uncle's like, I'm not a pro. I just, <laughs> I just drank it and then dies. <laughs> I'm not Steve-O bro. This ain't jackass. This is life. And you're you got to learn about it. Uh, so this Egyptian man, let's see what it says here. An Egyptian fisher is recovering a fish. I guess an Egyptian fisherman is recovering after undergoing an emergency surgery to remove a live fish that he had become lodged in his throat, nearly suffocating him. A 40 year old man arrived at the hospital, um, which is located south of Cairo. Medical staff who attended the patient said that he was unable to speak and was experiencing shortness of breath when he was admitted. Video of the procedure was recorded on November 7th on shared online with local media. That's an interesting. The 33-second video, a doctor is seen using one hand to pry open the man's mouth while trying to extract the fish with the other. Now, why would he have to pry the man's mouth open, I wonder? The man wasn't willing. He's like, no, keep it in. You know what I mean? Like, open your fucking mouth for the doctor, bro. Say, ah, for Christ's sake. He's got to use one hand to pry it open. Shit. Or what if his jaw wasn't big enough and he's like, we're going to have to take the jaw off. (laughs) The man's like, no, 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 no. I'll puke it up. I'll, you know, something. So yeah, he, uh, he dislodged it out of the man's windpipe. Uh, and when he tried to hold the fish in his mouth while attempting to catch a second fish by hand. So this guy caught a fish, put it in his mouth to like hold it while he caught a second fish. Man, people are hungry in Egypt, it sounds like. Jeez Louise. That's not cool. Poor guy. Goldfish swallowing, though. Yes, used to happen. It's like a, an old shout out, Uncle Mike. What's up, buddy? Hope you're doing good. Anyway, next up, we have our uh, queef of the week. And last week, oh boy, we had so many queef submissions and... Um, God, they were all so lovely. If you missed last week's episode, we did a real queef assessment. But I think my favorite was from Jesse's Girl. It's Devin. 
Queef of the Week. There you go. <laughs> really, I imagine a clinched jaw there. So today's Queef of the Week is a gentleman uh, who uh, he goes by the name of Michael Hutto. Maybe not a household name, but if you live on the East Coast uh, and you have seen any car that is driven by a douchebag, uh, you'll know this man's imprint on the world, and that is he is the co-founder of Salt Life. Now, what is Salt Life exactly? I'm not going to lie to you. Not exactly sure, but I've seen it a million times in Buffalo even because people who go down to Myrtle Beach or Hilton Head, this is like a big beach thing for the East Coast. I understand through talking to the folk here that this is not a thing on the West Coast. But you said it was comparable to, uh, or comparable, excuse me, to like Billabong any? I mean, that's just what it reminds me of. You know, it, it looks like a Billabong, Hurley type thing. Why don't you pull up a little wiki on the uh, Salt Life brand while I get into the story of what this gentleman did here, you see. The Salt Life co-founder shot a woman, then left her in the Singer Island hotel room. The co-founder of the Salt Life apparel brand is back in Palm Beach County after his arrest in connection with the death of an 18-year-old woman. Uh, Michael Hutto, 54, was booked into the Palm Beach County Jail Sunday. Hutto was arrested October 30th for manslaughter charge in Jacksonville. Oh boy, he is accused of shooting the woman uh, at the Hilton Singer Island Oceanfront Resort. Looks like we have uh, a little bit of a case of, uh, of, well, murder is what I was going to get to here. Oh, oh, murder. There you go. Just want to get the ladies revved up, you know, before we get into it here. So police said the 18-year-old Lake City woman was found dead of a single gunshot wound inside the hotel. According to the probable cause affidavit, Duncan's father had requested a welfare check on his daughter October 29th after he hadn't heard from her for several days. Using her cell phone location, her father was able to track her down at the Hilton where police found her lying dead on the floor with a gunshot wound to the stomach. Uh, it said the head earlier, didn't it? Mm. Or maybe I just imagined that part. Uh, the room had been rented in Hutto's name and his wallet and identification card were inside the room. Not great to shoot the person and then leave the identification cards. Probably not the best bet. Or was he trying to go like, well, obviously they wouldn't think me. I left my identification cards here. An investigation revealed that one day earlier, Hutto had been taken to the Jacksonville Hospital after deputies in St. John's County found his car illegally parked in a St. Augustine gas station parking lot. He was reported to have been twitching, making delusional comments, and crying while his eyes were rolling into the back of his head. Good golly. Um, I wonder if that's just too much salt life, bro. I just caught some waves, dog, and I was just breathing in that salt air. When detectives questioned Hutto at the hospital, he told them, Oh my God, I think I hurt my Gracie. Well, that sounds like a confession. Uh, he then began to cry, the after David said. Later, Hutto told detectives he and Duncan were headed to the Florida Keys to visit some of his friends when they stopped at the Hilton. After spending time together on the beach, Hutto said they were playing inside of the hotel room as if they were shooting with their finger and a gun. Ho, ho, ho! I know that old game. Let's pretend we're shooting each other with this gun. Huddle told detectives that Duncan was sitting on the counter in her bathroom when he pointed the gun at her and it fired. Oopsies. Shooting her. Uh, and then he said he then put the gun in his backpack and left her in the room driving until he ran out of gas. Duncan's father told police that Huddle, who was her boyfriend, had been giving her drugs to keep her sedated. The co-founder of the popular Salt Life apparel brand was expected to make his first Palm Beach court appearance Monday. Well, let's check out. Did you pull up that salt life bra? Yeah, let's let's get out some ocean air bra. So they don't have a Wikipedia, but it says it is an authentic, aspirational, and lifestyle brand that embraces those that love the ocean and everything associated with living the quote salt life. Let's pull up some more. They got any? They got? They gotta have fucking like live, laugh, love type shit quotes, right? Like on their apparel. Have you? Can you go up to their website again and let's take a look at it? Man, can, this guy just is like all about getting some tasty waves and shit like that. And then he just goes, Kaboosh! blowing his girlfriend's stomach out. I mean, also, this woman is 18 years old and he is 54 years old. Like, he's totally like that guy. Like, if you went to Hermosa Beach, you would fucking see this guy everywhere. And he'd be like, What's up? My dad pays my cell phone bill still. And, uh, 
but this guy he created a, an entire apparel line uh co-founded it he might be he might have been the like because judging by his mug shot what is all this that we're looking at these are just people that work there yeah i'm looking at the team I'm trying to find some information on him oh they don't have his fucking face on their website still you got to be kidding me i want to see if there's any just salt life stuff bro because this is the i almost said a bad word this is a uh lame brand this is the lamest shit people have bumper stickers of this all the time salt life dog like you go in 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 Buffalo, New York. I no, I saw them. It's like, oh, you go to the beach that much? You got to put this. Who wants to put this shit on their fucking car? It's the same people that put live, laugh, love and shit like that. What does that say? Live salt life, bro. It says the the. Wait a minute. Oh, it says live the salt life. Rock a decal so there's no question where your heart and true interest <laughs> lies. <laughs> fucking gay. <laughs> it just is. It's so stupid. Fuck this stupid shit. If you do that, you're fucking stupid, right? I mean, come on. I got a salt life car decal on my car. Mm. But like, uh, do they have any other like aspirational things? Like what it means to be in the salt life? I don't understand. They, that's the thing that they don't ever tell you. Or do you just know, man? If you're in the salt life, you just know it. It says, uh, when you're a fan, you're proud, passionate, and ready to proclaim your allegiance to the world. And since you're an enthusiast of Salt Life, our popular and distinctive decal provides a stylish way to let everyone know just how significant your ocean-centered lifestyle really is. Oh, man, I'm so centered with the ocean. You want to go in the hotel room and play with this gun? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, bro. <laughs> well, let's listen. To, let's look at something a little more happy, shall we? We all know about uh, Four Seasons Total Landscaping, right? We all recall what occurred with the President of the United States over at that area. They've got merch now and things like that. Well, it turns out it's become a very popular destination in the VR world, virtual reality. Yes, VR, virtual reality furries are now running around the Four Seasons Total Landscaping. Let's so here with this. I don't even understand. That sentence doesn't even compute as making sense to me. But here we are, nonetheless. So furries are going there. Is that two furries like fucking any? I think that's just a furry writing. A oh, do you know what I saw? Uh, the camera looked like a black square blocking out genitals. And I thought that that's what that was. But uh, sorry. So folks, I'm blind. And uh, there's images across the room wait what what camera are you talking about the main camera in the center is blocking part of the thing for me so i thought it was a black square on the screen because i have no depth perception and i thought it was blurring out genitals oh our camera <laughs> yeah yeah got it okay in between me and the television so. got you yeah so i was i was confused i thought those two i thought that was a furry fucking another furry no yeah i think he's uh riding a cat it looks like so now are you familiar of... you're familiar with the furry world are you not no, what? <laughs> when did you get that understanding? I thought perhaps you dated some people in it. <laughs> no, no, man, I, I know nothing about that. World. I thought you you dated some of these con Comic Con types that maybe like venture into this realm, or at least you maybe had some working knowledge of it. Yeah, I, I dated girls that are into cosplay, but that is a that's a very different world than than a than a furries. furry. Interesting. You draw the line. So, like, what if her cosplay had elements of furriness to it? You mean like cat ears? Uh, like what, about, what about a whole getup, a whole cat? Mm, you're, you're pushing it. I mean, you're all of a sudden it. you got Mickey Mouse. Ha ha, what's up, Eddie? Oh, boy. <laughs> Hi, Eddie. How are you? Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, super hot. You, got, you think you can fuck that? That sounds super hot. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, the furries have. And then what is this VR like? So they, it's kind of like they're on the Google map or something. Like, how does that work? You understand that? Uh, the VR chat is like its own little world. It's it's kind of like um, if if you ever played uh, Second Life on PC, it's kind of just like it's a whole world that you can venture, but the whole point is just communicating with other people. So could the furries come to my house and fuck technically then too? Well, Isn't I mean like the whole world. I mean, uh, if they were to make it in there, then yeah, I don't know who who makes VR chat, like who makes the world, but if they decided to, you know take enough pictures and make that 3D environment, yeah, they could. Interesting. So that's how it all works. Let's hear what it says here. Uh, the Philadelphia business smack dab between a crematorium and a sex shop, by the way. I don't know if people noticed that. That's where uh, 
Four Seasons Total Landscaping is located, which made it even that much more hilarious. It's in many ways the heart and soul of America. I do agree. It also happens to be the place, as we know, where New York, former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani and other supporters of President Donald Trump uh, failed re-election campaign addressed the press after media outlets called the race for his Democratic opponent, Joe Biden. Now it exists in virtual reality, complete with weather detailing and a last minute Trump 2020 podium. So all the furries can go near the podium and do what do they fuck? Do furries fuck? Do we know? I mean, do you put your dick outside of that costume and get it sucked by the other furry or do they just rub up and jerk off inside those costumes? I mean, those things are elaborate. That is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the whole point is they, that they do fuck and there's definitely... Holes and shit. Holes specifically created for those things. It's interesting because some of those costumes are so elaborate they have like air conditioning units inside of them. Do you know what I mean? So you don't get hot? Yeah, Talking about a Disney World and shit? They're intricate, man. I feel like the first must have been whoever wore that Big Bird thing. He was just like, man, I'm trying to fuck right now. Here's a question. (laughs) Yeah, right? The, The Big Bird, the first Big Bird? He had to wear, he had to have like sticks and shit in there. I don't know if he was not really tall or something. But here's a question. Do you think at Disney World... Do you think they screen for furries the way they should screen for a pedophile? <laughs> you know, obviously, if you're going to work at Disney World, they don't want any sex offenders. So they look at that. But do they go in depth enough to find out your sexual proquivities or whatever that word is? I don't know how to say it. Well, I feel like the good news is that there's no they don't create holes in those costumes. So no, but that doesn't mean that the guy isn't like pulling his hand out of the other hand and going like la la da 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 down inside, you know? It's ha, ha, true. What's up, Benny? It's me, Mickey. Ha, ha. He's jerking off inside the hole. Mommy, Mickey's really still all of a sudden. Hold on, Mickey's finishing. Ha ha. Okay. Is there anything left to this story? No, the furries, they're just going around fucking around there, yeah. So, and some, I, I, if you're a furry and I've offended you, I'm sorry. I don't know how your culture works. Do let me know. I mean, if you're not having sex in those things, you're doing something else, then fine. Fine by me. Next up, we have a headline that says, Suspect fires 16 shots at home after baby was called ugly. How dare you call my baby ugly? A man and woman were arrested after allegedly firing 16 shots into a home after a baby was called ugly, reports this local news station. No injuries were reported in the incident at a Detroit home. Oh, Detroit. Weird. Um, Sunday morning, as the TV station reports, an initial investigation by Detroit police indicates that a 21-year-old man and a 26-year-old woman confronted a 23-year-old woman at her home, which led to an argument with the woman's 31-year-old boyfriend. The argument escalated, and the 21-year-old man retrieved his gun from his vehicle and unloaded it, firing at least 16 shots into the home. Two young children were inside. The suspects fled in a white Pontiac, police said. They were spotted later and taken into custody. A weapon was also recovered. A neighbor told the news station that there was an infant inside the vehicle. He said it all started when someone called the baby ugly. I don't know that that's, I mean, I don't think that's where it all started. I think it all started back with trauma and rage issues and things like that. Like calling a baby ugly simply doesn't just trigger everybody. I don't know. I don't, if I had a baby and you called it ugly, I'd be like, yeah, it is. I made it. It's part of me. I made it. So yeah, it's going to be ugly. You know, it's my baby. So that's how I know it's mine because it's ugly. You know, I wouldn't get upset. I don't think. Is there anything that would trigger you to fire an unloaded gun any like what would do it what are the words i mean if you if, if i said your mom was ugly or something if you threw first of all absolutely yeah see do well, look what i did look what i did any if he had a gun right now guy 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 through the fucking window <laughs> out at me here in this and i'd be like <laughs> look at i just did it i figured it out i found the button yeah also i don't know how you're saying that you don't think any parent would be infuriated if somebody said that their baby was ugly you think they'd be like you just like all right yeah kind of. i don't think that that's true i think that if you are a person who would be infuriated by some rando calling your bub ugly your baby ugly enough to unload a gun into a home of human beings that didn't do that i would suggest perhaps you were deranged a little bit prior to the baby being called ugly that's true if they actually i feel like like every parent would want to do that but yeah, I feel like if you actually went through with it and did it, 
I mean, yeah, you have yeah, rage issues. issues. You have tremendous rage issues, especially like whose opinion is it? This it's not like, uh, you know, a president of the United States or a senator or something was like that baby is atrocious looking, and then you're like so enraged that he embarrassed you and like in front of all these people. This is just like Joe calling your baby ugly. Like who gives a shit? They already got into. I wish we knew what the other parts of the argument were, but they don't discuss it in here. But I just thought it was interesting how it could trigger somebody like that. I'm sure. My parents heard that quite often, don't you think? I mean, my parents probably heard that I was ugly all the time as a baby. Actually, I was a very cute baby, so fuck you. Yeah, but but could you imagine somebody going up to you and saying that? It's it's the act of like them going out of their way to be like, "Hey, your baby is disgusting." Well, I think in this case that they were arguing about other things, and then he just threw it out there. He's like, "And your baby's ugly," and then he was like, "Oh shit, you didn't fucking just say that," and then he got the gun. You know what I'm saying? Think, it was the tipping of the scales. You think it was just in passing? Yeah, it was like the end. <laughs> it was the button that really just... Because obviously that's where the uh, the article... Or that's where the um, incident escalated and got to become uh, untenable there. So, you know, some good news. Uh, some bright spots. You want to hear a fl- nice fluff story? Uh, Jeffrey Epstein's Palm Beach mansion. It is going to be demolished. Uh, the Florida mansion where Jeffrey Epstein is said to have his sexually abused underage girls and things like that will be demolished by a local real estate developer. The developer, Todd Michael Glazier, told the Wall Street Journal that he signed a contract with the Epstein estate to buy the dead pedophile's waterfront Palm Beach. That's just a fun sentence to say. To buy the dead pedophile's waterfront Palm Beach property, which went in the market for... $21.9 million in July. The deal is set to close next month, after which Glazer said he plans to raise the property and replace it with a new home. Palm Beach is going to be very happy that it's gone, he told the journal. And uh, I'll be at the Palm Beach Improv on March 21st. It's a little bit down the road. I don't know if this will get demolished by then or not. But maybe we'll be able to make a bit of a a hodge to it, if you will, or what have you. The deal is set to close next month. Okay, so they're going to close the deal, and then it's probably going to be gone. Uh, Glazer wouldn't tell the newspaper how much he and his partners paid for the late financier's property, but he said they received a discount. I would imagine. That's the thing. That's the reason you buy that property, because it's probably vastly discounted. What are your guesses? I mean, we don't know the answer, but... um, there is a person close to the deal who told the journal the price was close to, and I won't say because I do want to hear some guesses from the other room. Guess for how much he bought Epstein's mansion? Yes, it was discounted. It's it, initial price, $21.9 million, in which that's when Epstein bought it, uh, and it went on the market at that price. So there was a bit of a discount added. So what do you think they got it for at the end of the day? The sprawling estate includes, I'll tell you all the, the amenities while you think. You can all get a guess. The sprawling estate includes a main house with six bedrooms, a three-bedroom staff house, and a pool house. Uh, in July, the front gate was vandalized with the words gone but never forgiven, written in blood-red paint. Well, they got to take a few bucks off for that. Don't forget. Uh, Epstein has long been accused of luring numerous underage girls to the mansion. We all know that. Bah, bah, bah. He was locked up on sex trafficking charges, and he committed suicide. They put that in the article. He knows he didn't do that. That's the whole thing. Um, his Manhattan townhouse is still on the market. That one. We'll get into the price of that. That's actually worth more. That's crazy. So what do you think they got the mansion for? If it started at 21.9, I mean, that's got to be what 60 percent of that maybe maybe so just give know, me a 12? price 12 all right Wait, 12. Uh, and nadav you're good at real estate if you know my, what i'm saying uh no what are you saying josh i just think you're good at business uh-huh <laughs> and stuff so <laughs> what do you think the price is um i would say uh let's see it, it, and it's like a beach it's like a water property right uh, yeah, it's in West Palm Beach. It is a waterfront Palm Beach property. Sprawling estate, main house. See, I feel like the, the move is that they probably still think that they could maybe sell it to some, like, retired uh, Jays that move out there. So maybe... Well, they're going to demolish it. Right. And but then like, they're going to build a new house, and then, yes. Right, right, right. But, like, they're selling the lot. Yes, and then some old people will come, and they'll be like, I can't believe the deal we got on this. 
I'll tell you, it, it's really wild because in L.A., they still can't sell the Black Dahlia house, I think, or the uh, the Benet. Is that the one? Oh, the John Benet house. Yeah, like that one. That's in that's in Colorado. Right. That one's in Colorado, but I think- They can't the, sell that one. You're I right. I think the Black Dahlia house is also- uh, Is the Black know. Dahlia one the one up in like Los Feliz? Yeah. Yeah, I've walked to that after-, after It's a really nice place. After doing coke with a stripper a couple <laughs> times. I swear to God, I've walked to that house. <laughs> um, but I would say for a, a water property uh, lot, like without the Epstein mansion, I'd say maybe a nice discount of 75% off. I think probably Jesus. five mil. Okay. Well, and does Zolo have a number? I'd guess around um, like eight million. Okay. And you think that's the discount, or you think that's the uh, the price that they sold it for? Uh, the price they sold it for. You guys are off. I'll say that you're you're giving the discount a lot of credit. They actually didn't get it discounted that much. Turns out they, uh, well, this is according to a person close to the deal. Uh, the price ended up being close to eighteen million. So not that much of a discount considering the absolute wild amount of crimes that happened there. I mean, we're talking Jean Benet times about 50,000. I mean, nobody, I guess, was murdered. But what's worse, do you think? Would you rather buy a house that someone was murdered in or a slew of underage girls were R-worded in? And I'm not saying head trauma. Uh, I'm talking about the other R-word, the one, you know. If it was me. The accident we made earlier. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, which, which one do you think would you be able to tolerate better? Uh, if it was me, I would pick. I'd pick the the Epstein mansion. I'd, I'd go in there because it doesn't really matter to me what happened in the inside. Like that doesn't. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't understand that concept of like something happened in a house, so you have to be neither do I. Out about Same it. with like murders. It's I don't. It's like I don't even. It's like it's the house. Like I go into buildings all the time that I don't know what happened in them. We go to the comedy store. They say there's murders that happened there. We still are like, oh, it's so great. And you know what I'm saying? Like. No one seems to give a shit about that, but, you know, throngs of people go in there and there was like rumored to be murders in there and stuff. You know what I mean? Back in the mob days. Yeah. I I, I don't know. I mean, I know that if I go to in a a hotel room, I'm sure there's a bunch of people that fucked in there that I wouldn't like. So I actually got excited. I stayed at the hotel next to the comedy store and I was like, oh, do you know how many rock stars died in here? This is fun. Um, But uh, yeah, no, I just never got that either. Like. The John Bonet house, it's like, if it's super cheap, someone just buy it. And if you have a real fucking problem with it, just knock it over and fucking build a new one on there. You're saving a bunch of money anyway. I never got that kind of shit either, man. Um, I won't make Nadav answer. He seems skittish about answering that question. I mean, the New York State one is still on the market, and that one you can't demolish. You can't demolish an, an Epstein's Manhattan townhouse. You can't demolish a townhouse in manhattan i don't do not think guess what the price is on that shit 88 million dollars that's way that's like four of the waterfront mansion that's crazy that's just hey that's that that's that uh new york state real estate am i right nadav oh boy well folks I thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to cut the show up here and uh, wrap it up. I want to thank all the people who submitted queefs last week. That was so exciting, and I want more of them. I'd like more. Of course, the brand new email is Josh Potter Show at ymhstudios.com. And, uh, of course, we're going to get merch up going to the store. Thank you for uh, sticking with us through the name change. I appreciate that. And um, I want to say thank you to... Any Nadav and Zolo for chiming in there on their real estate insights and uh, also for producing the show, obviously. And uh, I hope you continue to rate, review and subscribe on iTunes. Please to be doing that and uh, comment on the, uh, you know, I notice people on YouTube. Uh, I don't really I try not to read comments because I get scared you're going to say something mean about me. But I've noticed people are doing a thing now where they'll comment in all caps so that I can see it with my weak eyes. So that's very nice of you. I hope you continue to do that. Thank you to whoever came up with that idea. I'm not certain who I can give credit to for that. Um, Actually, real quick before we go, we have a couple minutes, so I wanted to read this one piece of uh, listener feedback. It was, again, going back to our debate about uh, clean and dirty uh, assholes on NFL players. And um, this person wrote in, it was uh, 
submitted by Nicole. It says, I noticed you didn't have any kickers in your assessments. That's what they wrote. Uh, Are they kickers clean or dirty? Kickers to me don't even have asses. Okay. They're like obsolete. You know what I'm saying? Like they barely do anything. Their asses, they just don't even, they're not even clean or dirty. Like they just don't have asses. So just, they are not even considered in the conversation. You know what I mean? But I bet if you were to eat one, it would just be like a Ken doll. Do you know what I mean? It was just like, if you took their pants down, there wouldn't even be a hole there. It would just be two butt cheeks. And then they would be like, yeah, you want me to kick this field goal or whatever? Uh, so you don't even have to let, that's my assessment of kickers. There are a few toss up positions though, as we've mentioned, uh, running backs, linebackers. These are individual based. You can see one and go, that's a clean ass, probably. Then you can see another one and just... Damn, that ass is stinky. You don't want that. You don't want any part of that. But thank you, Nicole, for sending that email in to uh, uh, Josh Potter Show at ymhstudios.com, the brand new email address. And I hope that you all continue to give me feedback. Get some articles in here that you want to hear. Um, other than that, thank you so much for, the, for joining the show and have a good rest of your week. <laughs>